When you spin in front of half the field, usually it takes others with you. But sometimes, Lady Luck spares you, as she did Tom Oden. The biggest battle of the 2001 race was between Richard Shohan, who powered past number 32, Kelly Lubosch, racing door-to-door -door for the silver and bronze. But the day belonged to Michigan's Andy McDermott, who had his Ford Mustang running on rails. McDermott took the checkers a gaping 31 seconds ahead of his nearest competition for his second title in a row. Can he add another today? We'll see. If running and racing big V8 powered muscle cars is your cup of tea or maybe shot in a beer, then American Sedan is for you. And Andy McDermott is the two time and defending champion in this class. Blue ovals and bow ties. He's carrying the Mustang colors for the Ford guys against the Camaros out here in American Sedan. But looking calm, cool, and collected, and behind the wheel of a Camaro is Richard Shohan. He expects to be a challenger for the title this year and has been fast in early practice and qualifying. So look for the rubbing and racing to go on here, American Sedan style. Now let's go to my broadcast partner. Here's Dorsey Schrader. In the American muscle car ranks, it's always been a war between Chevrolet and Ford. The three cars here could win today. In the Chevrolet camp comes Cary Grant. Now he's the Midwest Division champion, and in his Camaro, he has won four times. Now I'm a Mustang kind of a guy, you know that. I had one myself. So I look over here at the Southwest Division champ, Bob Hahn. He has also won four times in his Mustang don't cut out Kent Binninger. Now, Kent took some time off to be with family this year, but he's finished the season up very strong. He's come to mid-Ohio with a very fast Mustang. Five liters of big V8 power in American sedans are going for a national championship, and there are 40 of them trying to find that one very important spot first across the start-finish line and the checkered flag. It's national championship racing at the Valvoline Runoffs. Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course hosts the event for the ninth time and the 39th time for the runoffs to, her, to occur. We're glad you could join us. I'm Brian Drebber with Dorsey Schrader up here in the booth. Guy Hobbs and Chris Neville downstairs. Here's a look at the racetrack these big cars are going to try to fit on. A perfect racetrack for these big cars to fit on because of its length. 2.4 miles, 15 turns. They're tight turns, but long straightaways. These guys got big 310 cubic inch V8s. A lot of muscle. They got enough room for 40 cars? I doubt it. 40 cars will start. We're not sure how many are going to finish, and you can bet that they're going to be pushing and shoving around the racetrack. Let's take a look at the Valvoline starting grid, show you how they line up. Matthew Roberts with his first ever pole position, Shohan second position, and look at Andy McDermott back in fifth, qualifying kind of a mixed bag, and some guys didn't get fast laps in in time. Well, the Ford takes the pole, but you got two Chevys, and they're fast. They're second and third, and then a whole bunch of, a whole gaggle of Ford Mustangs right behind it, but I'll tell you what's hard on these cars, tires, you can burn them right off. 15 Fords, 21 Chevys, and four Pontiac Trans Ams make up the field of 40 cars here. And let's go downstairs right now to Chris Neville. Well, up here on point, Matt Roberts, his third time at the runoffs, he's never led. So he's leading this thing from the get-go. I talked to Matt just a little while ago. He said, it's mine to lose, but I'm willing to throw some elbows out there. And I think if you took a look at the other side of the car over here, he's already thrown some elbows this weekend. And this might be more of a street fight than a race. A little bit further back to Guy. Thanks, Chris. I'm down in 10th spot where Thomas Oates, probably the hardest working man in the SCCA this weekend, he's racing in three different classes. He's the 2000 Touring and 2 class champion, and now he's going for the American Sedan Championship. As I mentioned, he starts back in 10th place. Tom Oates looking for a win in his Chevy Camaro today. A lot of drivers are going to be looking for their win here from even deeper in the field than 10th, but Tom Oates has certainly proven that he is worthy of a national championship in the past. He'll be going for another one here today in just a few minutes. But he's got a lot of competition, and you'll see all of it. Wouldn't it be great if you could continue the adventure? Welcome to Spider-Man, the game. Battle more vicious villains. Master more spider skills. And combat evil high above the city streets. Can you hang with that? Spider-Man, the game. Rated E for everyone. Also available, the box office hit Spider-Man on two-disc DVD and video. Buy it now. The rumble of a big B-twin makes your blood race. 
You grew up on the pegs of a dirt bike. You could smell a carb running rich from a mile away. Call 1-800-994-3664 to find out how you can become one of the best technicians in the world. Motorcycle Mechanics Institute. There are at least a hundred things you'd rather do than deal with the stress of filling out an application and qualifying for a home loan. But if you want the benefits of refinancing, it seems you have no choice. I can't make it tonight. I want to get this loan application finished. At AmeriQuest Mortgage, we give you a choice and a much easier way to get a loan. You see, at AmeriQuest, you work with one local loan advisor, someone who takes the time to explain things and actually does the paperwork for you. Someone who treats you like more than a credit score. Someone like me. With two decades of experience and over 200 branches nationwide, AmeriQuest knows how to offer you the no-stress home loan. The time is right, so call AmeriQuest now at 1-800-297-9841 or go to urmore.com. That's 1-800-297-9841. Call AmeriQuest, the company that knows you are more. Speed Channel's coverage of the SCCA Valvoline runoffs is brought to you by Valvoline. You can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. Well, those big bad race cars are out there on the track right now, and they're siding lap at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. And shortly, the green flag away, but turn them loose, and that is going to be an impressive sight. Big old American muscle cars here. All have 305 cubic inch V8s. You can balance and blueprint them. They allow you to do modifications to suspension and brakes. And believe me, you need those brakes here at Mid-Ohio. And you need a lot of that big, hard sheet metal out there, too, that some of these guys will be using through the course of the race. We always hope for good, clean racing, but somehow it just seems to go the way of bump and run. Let's go downstairs to Chris Neville. Well, back-to-back -back champion and Andy McDermott, who's going for the hat trick this weekend, has been a little bit disappointed with the week thus far. He's been snake bit with mechanical problems. He's disappointed with his qualifying effort, but I talked to him right before they went out. He said, I'm a big guy. I got a big car. I'm coming through. And down here, Richard Shohan, who is qualified in second position. No problems before the race. And the idea is to save the tires for the first 10 laps and use them up in the second 10 laps. Brian? Getting ready to go, and Dorsey, I would imagine that these tire, these cars could abuse a set of tires pretty badly. Well, you got that right. They can rip the skin right off the back of these with the kind of power they make, and uh, they're going to have to, they're going to have to temper it in the beginning. You can't win this to the end, and you got to have something left to win with. Well, if Andy McDermott's going to make a run to the front, we're going to see it because we're riding on board with the big guy in the number 24 as they get set to go to the green flag here, starting from the back side of the racetrack. If you're a believer in rubbing his racing, you're about to get some. Well, they had some rubbing marks on them just from qualifying as they go green. Here in the American Sedan class, vying for a national championship. Mustangs, Camaros, and Trans Ams, and we've got a big move for the lead. A huge move coming up from deep in the field. Takes over McDermott's in second position, and he's got a high full of brake lights oh, in the number nine car. Well, That's Chubba Buddha show, and we got cars off the track. We got in trouble. Luckily, that car spun to the inside, and it's given enough room, but all the bumping and banging has already started as we saw McDermott give a little nudge, and uh, that's what he needed to do to get where he had to go. 25 of Matthew Roberts, our pole sitter, is the man off the racetrack, and he got shuffled back in a hurry, and then spun oh. boot, and now we got another car backing it into the gravel trap, the that 15 <laughs> of Shohan. So we've got two of the big contenders, the pole sitter and one of the real contenders in this race are out already. And that was with some help from Mr. McDermott, I am have to say it, when we showed the road, a big wreck behind the front two. That's going to collect a bunch oh, of Oh, another one. Yeah, that's the one I saw. I saw that spin and looked at the front of the red car, the Mustang. That was a big hit with some. Well, both those cars were going to be out. Those were really hurt. Well, the two leaders have skated away pretty much unscathed as out in front of this Chubba Buddha show. We're going to have to call him CB, I'm afraid. Oh, that car right there, the red Mustang, just lost the radiator, so it's going to be antifreeze everywhere. Oh, boy. That There's your 15. They're still trying to get him out of the gravel trap as the two lead cars went by pretty cleanly. All the trouble started deeper in the field. Well, here it is it happening already. There was a bump there. The Camaro got a little loose. And as they come up here, look at McDermott. He's going to come up. Oh, he got a little help right there. And it stacks everybody up pretty solidly. You see everybody trying to get on the brakes and wave at each other, say, look out. And that's just the start of it right there. And of course, here, watch. 
Those two just got together. McDermott hit the 15. It puts it backwards right into the gravel trap. It's not going anywhere. That's going to bring the full course sooner or later. It hasn't happened yet. And then the big Grand Carambolage. Captain. 15 car backed into the field. You're busting on poor uh, Andy McDermott. He's up there in second spot behind sh behind uh, That's Chuck, right. uh, behind Buddha Show. And these two guys were the ones staying out of trouble. It was all difficulty was going on behind them with uh, La LaCroix and Bob Hahn. Thomas Oates has come up from 10th to 5th in the running order right now. But this man's name is, you would think, almost unpronounceable. It is Chuba Budashow leading the race in American Sedan ahead of the number 24 of defending champ Andy McDermott, who's going for his third. Well, I tell you, Chuba, really aggressive start. Got up there, and, and you're right, he did, and him and uh, McDermott have stayed clean so far, and they didn't put a caution out, which is really surprising to me. That means they towed the, uh, towed the 15 out of that gravel truck. Coming to the start-finish line ah, right there's there. the yellow. <laughs> Just yellow as I flag, and they're going to slow it down now. A full-course caution, apparently, as they were not able to get the mess cleaned up quickly enough. So that's going to slow down the leaders and bunch up the field here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, and we're going to have to do it all over again in just a little bit. You're on board with Andy McDermott, the defending champion in American Sedan, chasing leader Chuba Buda Show in the number nine. He qualified third. He is leading this race in his Chevy Camaro. But now we're under a full course caution, and we'll start them over again here in just a few minutes. Stay with us at the Valvoline Runoffs at Mid-Ohio. What is the essence of performance? Speed, traction, control. Or is it exceeding your own expectations? The Kumo Extra Supra 712, world class quality and value. Kumo, way to go. Hi, I'm Michael Andretti. Hi, I'm Paul Tracy. Hi, I'm Max Pappas. Hi, this is Kenny Brack. Hi, I'm Cristiano D'Amato. Hi, I'm Tony Cannon. Hi, I'm Dario Franchitti. The Kart FedEx Championship Series, Mexico City. Live today at 3.30, only on Speed. Today we're learning how Dell helps people order America's favorite PC. We're supposed to write a report on what we learned. So you're a big video game player. It sounds like you're really into music. That's cool. Oh, so you're on the road a lot. You have two kids in college. <laughs> I was hoping that we could get her on Hey, how's it going, guys? Mr. Richards, we don't want to get anyone in trouble, but everyone just seems to be chit-chatting. Right, but they're not just talking, they're listening. You can't make someone's perfect PC if you don't find out how they're going to use it first. That's exactly what I told her, sir. Get your perfect PC. Just call or go online now and get a Dimension desktop for just $6.49. Featuring an Intel Pentium 4 processor for awesome performance for today's digital entertainment. Recording music, sharing photos, gaming, and beyond. And for a limited time, you'll get free shipping. Get great deals on notebooks, too. Dude, you're getting a Dell. I don't want to get into any trouble, but... Your perfect PC? It's easy as Dell. Dell PCs use Intel Pentium 4 processors. Prepared to go back racing here in the American Sedan Class at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in the SCCA Valvoline Runoffs National Championship. And we've already had a whole bunch of action as the cars get ready to go once again behind... Uh, Chuba Budashaw, who is your leader, Andy McDermott, who is your defending champion, carrying the onboard camera. And there was just all kinds of mayhem behind these two. And it was all just a stack-up effect up there in the S's, and everybody just kind of got into it back of everybody else. And that's what happens with big cars. The top two qualifiers were involved, and Matthew Roberts and Richard Shohan, both of them are moving again and out there on the racetrack. They lost a lot of positions. Well, these cars are really, really on a nice edge. It doesn't take much to turn one around backwards. A little bitty bump. You see how right there, you see a good classic example of the car sliding across the, the surface of the race track. Roberts, in fact, back in 33rd position and Shohan 38th. Big four-wheel drifts coming up over the top there. 
have plenty of power, these cars. They can break the rear wheels loose in any gear at any speed. McDermott so. having a look inside. No contact. But Andy McDermott, if he's saving his tires, he must have decided that a few caution laps saved them for him. It's a great shot, too, as we look out to the front and watch the steering wheels on the front end of the, uh, of the uh, Camaro there. You see all the corrections the driver's making. Still on board with McDermott as they cross the start-finish line to finish four laps. Still a tightly packed bunch here. There, another look uh, at the 29 car. Brian LaCroix, he was kind of in the middle of all that action for a while. And the 25 of the pole sitter, Matthew Roberts. Let's go to Chris Neville for more on that. Well, Matt was pretty excited about being the pole sitter, but he had never uh, led a runoff race before. He wasn't up there long anywhere from what happened. Uh, front runners up there were uh, resorting to some uh, rough driving to take the pole position from us, and uh, they're pretty effective with it. How's Matt feel right now? Uh, he's very upset. Well, it sounds like he's pretty frustrated. He had a really good week going into today, but race day is all that matters. He's trying to work his way up through the field. Oh, yeah. Doing a little pushing and shoving of his own there on the 89 car of uh, on, on that, 80, that yellow 89 Camaro. Right, the 89 knows he's there now. He just gave him that tap. Hey, I'm back here. Look in your mirror. The 89 is Gene Nichols out of Arkansas. And there the pass is made, right? Yep. The horsepower down the straightaway. Well, Roberts was fast. He was the pole sitter, and he sure got shuffled back by some very aggressive driving up front. Bob Hahn, Brian LaCroix, Thomas Oates from 10th to 5th, as we mentioned, but it is Budishow that is leading this oh, race. That. There we go again. He's still rooting and pawing, trying to get up there. That's exactly what happened to him at the beginning, is the same kind of a tactic as that. You can't be bumping these guys when the car's unloaded going over the hill. Are you going to spin? And there's no room for the, for the car to go without taking somebody with it. This is the closest that Robert Davis has been to the pole sitter as he tries to make a move inside and has to back it out with a couple of wheels. Right, we got two in the ditch yeah, here. Checking up, and we got a, a waving yellow in the turn there as the three car gets going again. The three car, we got one stuck in the gravel trap on the outside. Look at the damage of the 88. That was from that first lap incident. That's exactly right. The 88 was uh, definitely involved. Kent Bittinger. He's uh, soldiering on around the racetrack with a very compromised-looking race car. Now the battle up front again with Budishow still holding off McDermott, who's, uh, I would say, being very patient, although he's not afraid to show the leader a, a, a fender here and there. Now these two guys are doing a smart thing. They're not knocking each other all off the racetrack, and with, because of that, they're able to pull away from the rest of the guys. You know, there's not much room when you've got 20 cars going for the lead. I'd rather just race one guy like this. A little under two-second advantage for Budishow over the third place, Brian LaCroix. He's got McDermott for company, and there you can see how close together they are on the racetrack. LaCroix in third, Bob Hahn in fourth, and Thomas Oates in fifth. This is the battle for fifth right now. I tell you, Budishow really gets off of the keyhole really good and pulls a big, big lead. And then when he gets to this end, it looks like the Mustang is actually handling better. But uh, all it does is catch him up. He can't find a way around. It's Oates at the Tiger Stripe 99 and the number 80 of David Fenhaus. This is, the, as we said, the battle for fifth position. Han just in front of them, edging away ever so slightly. And Oates trying to hold off a battle there from the 80 car. Five laps complete coming up on the end of the sixth lap here very shortly. Oates driving across the curve there. And there you can see fourth, third, and second place cars just ahead of them. There's not a lot of room in between them all. Once they sort out these little battles, you should be able to settle down to some pretty serious racing for position. What you want to do with these cars is drive it completely smooth because the more of the sliding around you do, the, it's a death spiral. You just make the car worse. Look at the side by side through one. Ben House inside made that move coming off turn 15, was able to get position on Tom Oates. Oates now trying to come back on him as they enter the chicane. That's going to be tough. And Ben House show, holds the lead or holds the fifth position over Oates. There is the leader, Chubba Budishow. Canfield, Ohio, and what a great day it would be for him if he could hold on and win here in front of a lot of Ohio fans. Oh, we got an off-track excursion by McDermott, and he gets it back on, but not before losing the number two spot here. So Andy McDermott, the defending champion, having problems, and now he's trying to get up through the gears and back up to speed. I was going to say, when I saw that picture of Budisho, hey, what's happened to Rand? Andy? He's not there anymore. I guess we'll find out. So Chubba Budishow out in front, and he comes the, the, the run, runner-up Andy McDermott comes back onto the racetrack, and he will try to resume the battle. No longer in second place. We'll be right back. 
z -Bart. For over 40 years, we've been the smart choice for vehicle protection. But today, z is a whole lot more. From our antibacterial interior detailing, patented diamond gloss paint protection and professional window tinting, to car and truck accessories, including sprayed-on bed liners and remote starters. Save on z total protection package. Let your professional z dealer protect your vehicle from winter's harsh weather. z -Bart. That's smart. Call 1-866-888-3585 for the Z-Bart professional nearest you. You have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger, to redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Quite possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 90 health club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure. And check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web at bowflexultimate.com today. The new Bowflex for ultimate results. Speed News NASCAR Edition. No one covers NASCAR like Speed News NASCAR Edition. As soon as Junior went to the right, Rusty said, well, I'm going to go for him. It was over. Speed News NASCAR Edition. Sundays at 7, only on Speed. The American Sedan Class has only been around since 1995. But in that short period of time, one man has managed to win it twice, Andy McDermott. Andy, looking for the hat trick this weekend. Can you pull it off? Boy, it's going to be tough. We're going to need some serious mechanical reliability, and uh, uh, those guys are really gunning for me. Do you find the guys treat you differently out on track now they know you're going for three in a row? Yeah, uh, they, they are starting to get a lot faster than they used to be, and uh, uh, it's really going to be a chore getting it done three times. Last year you won from the pole in this Ford Mustang. Trying to get the hat trick. I'm sure you can do it, but you're going to get a little more pressure. Yeah, there's a big old bullseye in the back of this thing now. All right, well, we'll try and get that bullseye empty and go for the triple 20. McDermott dropped all the way back to 14th position. He's raced himself up to 11th in just a short time since the incident occurred. Dorsey, and uh, well, I would say now it's going to be really tough. Yeah, it is. Look at the smoke yeah. coming out of the back of the thing. He's really got a problem now. That looks like it could be. That's a big oily. Yeah, he's, he's done. off the course. He's done. He knows something bad's wrong, and he's pulled her off. Before he oils down the track, so he tucks it over on the inside there to get off the racing line. And Andy McDermott. Speaking about mechanical uh, reliability oh. issues, he's got coolant flowing up out from under the hood there, and we'll take another look at what happened, Dorsey, to find out just uh, what may have affected McDermott's ride at this point. Well, now I'm going to be theorizing that what we saw that fluid right there. Let's see what happens here. He takes a look up inside the 29, bumps him. Oh, he just took himself out. He just literally got himself. Now, he went over the curb. You see that big yellow curb? I bet you uh, he damaged the radiator or damaged something underneath the front of the car because now it's overheated and blown up. He did re-enter the racetrack in 14th position and raced himself up to 11th before something let go. And the big guy's climbing out of the Mustang right now, and there will be no third consecutive title for Andy McDermott. Well, he did a good job of realizing he had a problem just getting it out into the grass there, so he didn't oil down the track for everyone else. Jova Budashow leading this race and having an easy time of it now with McDermott's exit. Let's go down to Guy Hobbs. Yeah, we're down with Kent Bidding and Kent, uh, very early retirement, bust up car, some pretty nasty driving out there. Yeah, it's kind of like a NASCAR race out there. The last three years I've had really rough luck here at the runoffs. I had good position on people and they were cutting down on me and I got spun out and taken out again. And my luck just uh, doesn't seem to come with me to the runoffs. The last three haven't been so good. No, I uh, crashed uh, two years ago in a blown motor a year ago, and then this again this year. Now, the other bad news is your teammate, Andy McDermott, uh, you just told me he had a bad transmission. He's just pulled it off to the side of the road, won't make it three in a row. And he, of course, has won here eight times already in a row. Yeah, Andy's an incredible driver. He builds my car for me. He taught me a lot about racing, and uh, it's really unfortunate that he's having a rough day today, too. It, uh, he's definitely class of the field. All right, well, Kent, we'll let you try and uh, get your sense of humor back and refresh up. Well, the new leader could make a pretty good argument about being the class of the field himself right now with a two-and-a-half-second <laughs> lead. I was about to say, he looks like this man's the class of the field, blowing everybody off like that. There's the park race car of Andy McDermott. He's already left the cockpit and 
now we're just watching one of the workers here at the Valvoline runoffs through the onboard camera of Andy McDermott. There's your leader finishing up lap number nine. There's how far behind him is Brian LaCroix in the number 29. Croy running in second position pretty steadily, too, in his 97 Camaro. You look at Chubba right there, and look how he's driving the car. Look how smooth he turns in real nice. There's no big slides going on. And uh, that's, that's the kind of way you have to drive these cars to get him to go as fast as he's going right now. Very smooth. Yeah, he has not put a wheel wrong. Was able to wrestle the thing back into shape after McDermott made a move on him. He goes through the keyhole now and down the hill and towards the back stretch. That car working perfectly right now. There's no sliding around. And you know, doesn't nose over too hard on the brake when he gets on the brake down here. Watch the nose. Very well balanced. For eighth position, we're watching Kerry Grant in the number six car, and a move being put on him by Kenneth McVicker. McVicker pulling almost alongside, but Grant with a little bit under the hood there, State holds him off as they go down into the hardest braking corner here, turn six. Yeah, looks like Kerry, I mean, uh, Grant got in there very, very deep. 83 gave it up. Vicker not able to make the pass, and Monty Coles right behind them in 10th place. You can see there are little scuffles going on all over the racetrack now, except for in the neighborhood of the leader. This one is still pretty good. Quick through the infield part of the racetrack, McVicker there seems to have some pretty good cornering action, and a little bit of speed by Cary Grant down the, down the one straightaway that's long enough is the advantage that he has, it seems. So while we watch the battle for sixth place, Chubba Buddha Show, the number nine car out in front, an Ohio driver leads at Mid-Ohio. If you want the benefits of refinancing, you have no choice but to stress over a long application, right? Wrong. AmeriQuest Mortgage gives you a choice and a personal loan advisor to handle just about everything. With two decades of experience, AmeriQuest knows how to offer you the no-stress home loan. The time is right, so call AmeriQuest now at 1-800-287-1803. Or go to youaremore.com. Call AmeriQuest, the company that knows you are more. This is the sound. These are the results. This is the sound of the PowerFlex by Gold's Gym, the authority since 1965. Gold's Gym gives you one powerful machine with 65 club quality exercises. The secret to the Power Flex begins with the swivel flex pulleys that provide you with free range of motion. Next, Power Stroke Resistance simulates the natural movement of your muscles and allows you to move from 10 to 410 pounds of resistance with one simple stroke. Call now for free information about how you can get the Gold's Gym Power Flex into your home for as low as $49 a month. With the Gold's Gym Power Flex, you get the lat tower, the multi-position bench, hip strap, rowing seat, ankle strap, handles, and space saver design. As a special bonus, when you order, you'll also get the Gold's Gym Power Flex leg developer for stronger legs and shapelier hips and thighs. A $200 value absolutely free. Call the number on your screen now. Welcome back to the Valvoline runoffs at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. You're watching the pole sitter and would-be leader of the race. He said he had come here quite a few times and never led a race. He was all the way back in 38th at one position. Now he's in 20th position. So at one, one thing, uh, Dorsey Schrader, you have to say that at least he's having some fun out there and doing a lot of racing, passing some folks. He's, he's getting his money's worth out of it today. He had a big lurid slide coming out of turn one there, gathered that up, so he's got his foot down pretty hard right now trying to catch those guys. 25 seconds behind the leader, so a tall order to get up front here at the halfway mark. He's got 10 laps to try to do it. He is uh, pretty definitely the fastest car on the track, the only one running in the low 142s. In fact, the only one under a minute and 43 seconds a lap here at Mid-Ohio in the American Sedan class. The bad news on that is because of the position he's put himself into, he's have to run those laps like that early on in the race. We still have half the distance to go, and he's using the car up pretty hard right now. You can see the entire rundown across the top of your screen there. And after 10 complete laps, working on lap number 11, watching the number 17 car of Robert Eubanks out of Jacksonville, Florida, way deep in the field. Back in 26th position, but a good-looking silver car there in the American Sedan class. 99 Ford Mustang out of Jacksonville, Florida. Now 
leaving them all alone on the track there. He's already put a couple of cars behind him. Here's that battle for eighth position now. Kerry Grant and Kenneth McVicker still have not solved the issue between themselves. It looks like Grant gets through the corners a little bit better, but I don't think he's got the motor. We'll see here when he comes around on the keyhole here and heads down that straightaway. But to me, it looks like the 83's got some horsepower. McVicker looking inside. A couple of wheels up over the curb there. Lost a, maybe a half a car length with that move. Now he's in the draft pretty good, pulling up. He could make a move here going down into turn number six. He's looking to the right side, but he's not close enough yet. About halfway to the corner, and here they go. On the brakes hard now, and Kerry Grant keeps it. Yeah, it looks like Grant's better on the brake pedal down there for sure. McVicker gives up every time they get down to the bottom there. It looks like he's got more, more mile per hour, but he can't, can't quite get it done. So Kerry Grant holds on to eighth position over Kenneth McVicker. Tom Oates is ahead of them in seventh place. Then it's Kyle Watkins a little further up again. The whole rundown across the top of the screen there. Chubba Budashow continues to lead. He jumped out right on the very first lap and survived a restart too. Watching the 40, 40 car of Ronald LeBaron out of Virginia. And we're looking for the number 25 car who just set the fastest lap in the race. And he is really hauling it up there. Yeah, you got a big old four-wheel grip power slide over the top of 13 there, or, or 12. But like I say, he's running a lot of using. Oh, somebody's well, off the road. off the track. That'll pick up a position for Matt Roberts right away as he works behind John Blizzard. Oh, in look the at this. 13 car gets a fender inside, a little tap. Blizzard holds on, and Roberts can't get by him. Yeah, and somebody, like you said, went flying off up there in 13 and stuck in the gravel trap over there. Let's go to Guy Hobbs quickly. Uh, just, to, just talk to Matthew Roberts' team. He's not saying anything on the radio. He's way too busy concentrating on his racing, but he is really pushing it right now. Well, we can certainly see that. He's got no shortage of cars in front of him, though, Dorsey. And while he might be having fun, he's probably feeling a little frustration. We heard, of, heard about that earlier. Well, he's definitely got his head down. Now he's working the inside of John Blizzard. He's going to get a... Whoa! Oh, that's what I thought was going to happen. Oh, and he, he turned Blizzard out of his way, but then it was, he ended up right in front of him. So once again... Got a fire coming, he yep. stalled the motor there, so he's trying to get it refired. Matthew Roberts with flames coming out of the exhaust pipe on the right side of his Mustang, and... Keep the floor, baby, just keep the pedal down, it'll fire. Doesn't burn the door off, Chris. Yeah, he's still trying to get it going there, and when we see something besides a flame coming out, we'll know that the engine has refired. There he there goes, go. he gets it going, and spins the tires to move out again. We're going to take another look at that. It took a while to unfold. Well, that's two solid objects trying to occupy the same spot at the same time. You'll see what happens. There's the fender in the quarter panel. Now he's got him right in the door, so he's trying to push him out of the way. And stalls the motor right there. You'll see the flame come out. There it is right there. He tries to refire. Well, Matthew Roberts with some aggressive moves had just set the fastest lap of the race. He returns to the competition. He had gotten up to 18th place at that point. But now it's going to be a slow and painful ride as we have uh, more smoke, tire smoke, apparently off the 80 car there. That was a that funny was little slide going on there, too. That was Ben House, who had been fighting with Kerry Grant for position. Sorry, that was the uh, number the number 83 now has moved up uh, McVicker. And Ben House in the 80, who was having that problem just a moment ago, gave up his spots. And now Grant and McVicker are battling for sixth. So here's your leader, leader Chuba Buda show. And he is really putting on a show here, having led all of the 13 laps so far. If you added up all the hours you've spent rebuilding small blocks and boosting horsepower, you would have graduated from UTI by now. And you'd be getting paid for doing what you love. Call 1-800-884-4262 to find out how we can make you one of the best technicians in the world. Universal Technical Institute. Rally Britain, the World Rally Championship finale. The title has been decided. But the season's not over. They'll go hard through the fog, the mud, the mist, and the cold, chasing the last victory of the season. Rally Britain, tonight at 11, exclusively on Speed. Today we're learning how Dell helps people order America's favorite PC. We're supposed to write a report on what we learned. So you're a big video game player. It sounds like you're really into music. That's cool. Oh, so you're on the road a lot. You have two kids in college. 
was hoping that we could get her on the Hey, how's it going, guys? Mr. Richards, we don't want to get anyone in trouble, but everyone just seems to be chit-chatting. Right, but they're not just talking, they're listening. You can't make someone's perfect PC if you don't find out how they're going to use it first. That's exactly what I told her, sir. Get your perfect PC. Just call or go online now and get a Dimension desktop for just $649. Featuring an Intel Pentium 4 processor for awesome performance for today's digital entertainment. Recording music, sharing photos, gaming, and beyond. And for a limited time, you'll get free shipping. Get great deals on notebooks, too. Dude, you're getting a Dell. Richard, I don't want to get anyone in trouble, but... Your perfect PC? It's easy as Dell. Dell PCs use Intel Pentium 4 processors. The Valvoline runoffs at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, the Olympics of Motorsports, the 39th running of this historic event, and the ninth time we've been to this beautiful natural terrain road course just uh, north of Columbus. And Chuba Budishow has led all 13 laps of this race. He's getting into some traffic right now, and that alone will provide a little bit of uh, entertainment for him, I think. He's been all alone by, by out there by himself. Boy, and look, just look how smooth he is with this car. He's doing a great, just a great job. There's no way they're going to catch him if he doesn't make a mistake, and he knows that by now. I'm sure his crew's telling him, just stay smooth. That's the whole secret now. He comes up behind and around Wendy Lee in the number 42 car. Wendy out of... Uh, Indian Trail, North Carolina, and an 82 Camaro, one of the older models out there, but pretty similar to the one driven by the leader. Show edges away as he enters the keyhole. Now he'll get to open it up here down the back straightaway, pushing all the way back to the number two car on the track, the 29 of Brian LaCroix. LaCroix out of Massachusetts and the New England, uh, the Northeast Division. He's got a 97 Camaro. And the, the bow tie, the blue ovals and bow ties going after here in American Sedan. They're running almost identical lap times. First two cars are within a tenth every lap. Looks like he's got the front balance on, the, on that Camaro's loose when he breaks it. Thing jumps up and down and looks like the hood's going to fly up. A couple of Camaros up front and the Mustang of... Bob Hahn is in third position. There he is in the 96 car. Bob doing a good job. He's one of the guys I had interviewed uh, early on. He was real happy with his car. Uh, they took some time out of racing and gathered up some money to build a motor program for this thing. So he, uh, he thought he had a pretty good uh, horsepower. He's running lap times equal to the leader and the 25 car is pulled into the garage. So it appears that Matthew Roberts, the pole sitter, has had a pretty eventful day so far, but it is over. As Chubba Budishow continues to lead this race, although the faster, the fastest car on the track now is the one in second place. Brian LaCroix in the number 29 that we're looking at here could have been saving his tires for a late race run at the leader. Chubba makes it look awful easy. I can tell you for a fact that it is not. What he's doing in balancing a car like that is hard to do. He's, he's really concentrating to keep the car that nice. The lap car of Wendy Lee, number 42, just ahead of the third place, number 96 car of Bob Hahn. So Hahn's going to have to work his way around on this. As they enter the chicane, he probably won't really get a good chance until they get into the keyhole and down the back straightaway. He'll have to be patient, and he's losing time to the leaders. That's one of the things about Mid-Ohio. It's such a rhythm racetrack, and if you get caught up with a slower car in the wrong place, it just kills you. In fourth position is number 78, Kyle Watkins. Here's the battle now for fifth between Cary Grant and Kenneth McVicker. They stay right together but keep moving up. Those two guys are definitely pushing each other uh, up to speed and are making the ground, actually. They're moving forward with that. Well, they've just followed one another around the track. We saw a little battling going on, but now it seems like McVicker is content to follow Grant because he's been following him towards the front in a possible medal here at the Valvoline runoffs. American Sedan will be inside four laps to go when we return, and it is just getting good. Using an ordinary ratchet in a tight spot can really slow you down. In Trans Am racing, speed counts both on and off the track. Now, from Trans Am tools comes the Crank, a powerful new speed ratchet set built with the muscle and performance you got to have. Sure, the Crank can be used as an ordinary ratchet, but there's nothing ordinary about it. It's engineered so you can get into those tight spaces where ordinary ratchets can't work. Watch. In the twist mode, twist the handle to tighten or loosen the fastener. In the Crank mode, 
Hold the handle to really crank up the speed over ordinary ratchets. There's nothing like it. The Crank comes in this rugged, easy to store carrying case and has a lifetime guarantee. It's a complete 28 piece set that includes 14 chrome vanadium sockets with SAE and metric sizes, 10 screwdriver bits, two adapters, and an extension. The adapters and bits allow you to use the crank on virtually any fastener. Got an impossibly tight spot? Use the extension. Want to use other sockets? No problem. The crank works with any standard 3 8 inch drive socket. And the crank has the twist mode, an ingenious ratchet design that makes the socket turn continuously one way as you twist the handle in both directions. To work even faster, extend and fold the handle and crank away in either direction to turn the fastener. There's no wasted motion. Shift into crank mode and see how much faster this ratchet can work. You can go either direction, too. That's the nice part about it. Definitely getting into the tight spaces and the, the ability to go quick. I've never seen anything like it. Definitely like one of these in my toolbox. Call 1-800-328-0606 now to get the crank. You could spend over 90 bucks on tools and still not do all the things you can do with the crank. But if you call right now, you can get the full crank tool set, a $79 value, for two easy payments of only $24.99. Call 1-800-328-0606 for the crank. It makes a great gift. Call now. Chubba Buddha Show crossing the start-finish line with four laps remaining in the runoffs. For a national championship, it would be his first, and it has been a command performance but for this man. Ryan LaCroix is actually whittling away at his time. They're, they're very much closer together than they were two laps ago. Let's go down to Chris Neville with the crew chief of the nine car. Yeah, I'm here with Joe Rothermel, and you're the crew chief. However, you don't have a radio, so you really don't have a whole lot on what's going on with Chubba. But last time he went by, we noticed we're hearing a little bit something from the motor. Are you getting worried? Uh, not really. It's probably just a cracked header. He had trouble with the headers this week. Okay, but he's, he's running a real smooth race, but LaCroix starting to edge in on him. Well, let's just see what happens. We got, uh, what is it, five more laps? Let's call it four and less than four at this point as Budisho works around the lap 13 car of John Blizzard. We saw him earlier and he's fallen off the pace and working down through the results table while Budisho stays out in front. But yes, LaCroix, it was over. It was almost four seconds. It's under three now. So LaCroix definitely making a run at the leader. And of course, the patience we saw him taking with the lap traffic, of course, cut into the lead even that much more again. Oh, 83 cars off. Oh, just barely does not hit the guardrail. That's McVicker, who was fighting with Kerry Grant there and was following him towards the front. So Grant's still in fifth. McVicker has just taken himself out of sixth position and is trying to get the car fired again. Here's what happened. They were He was going for it. Down inside turn one, tried to get the inside, locks up the rear brake, gets the car sideways. That's not turn one, I'm wrong. Jumps over the curb and really lucky here that he got it stopped right before he would have hit that guardrail there. Down in the S's. That was just rear brake lockup. You saw him get inside there. He got took him in deep. And Grant's been better on the brake every time. He got tried to go in there just as deep as Kerry did, and uh, it just didn't stick. The SCCA workers over there talking to the race car driver. Obviously, he's okay. Just can't do anything about his current plight. Just parked inside the the racetrack there and up against the guardrail. Lacroix down to two and a half seconds advantage, and this is a battle now for fourth position as Kerry Grant on the sixth car has caught Kyle Watkins, or almost anyway, and he could definitely have a podium spot if he keeps driving like this. Yeah, he's, he's right there with him now. I mean, once you can see the guy and you're that close to him, magic happens. Somehow you just find a way to get, get up there. The two of them in sight of third place, Bob Hahn in the 96. You'll see Hahn's car just ahead of him disappearing down the straightaway as they come out of the keyhole. This is the 78 of Kyle Watkins running in fourth position. He's getting challenged by Cary Grant in fifth, while the leader, Chubba Budisho, is unchallenged. more fun than a turbo? A turbo with all-wheel drive. When you get it, you get it. The rally-inspired 227 horsepower Subaru WRX. I'm Michael Waltrip, and I feel the need for speed. 
be on the call for about an hour. You sure you're okay? Piece of cake. <laughs> Red light. Hey! Sunday morning. Hmm. No, I'm here. Mm hmm. That was so cheating. DirectTV.com. Upgrade your programming instantly. DirectTV. Happy watching. Can you experience the future or relive the past? Time travel? My question is why can't one change the past? Using your remote, you can take a glimpse into the mind of H.G. Wells. I can look inside your memories. Tune to channel 183 and order the time machine for only $1.99. They all pay a price. The Time Machine, starring Guy Pearce, now playing for only $1.99 on Blockbuster pay-per-view movies. The Valvoline Runoffs, American Sedan Class, one of the newer classes in a very old series of racing that is called the Olympics of Motorsport, and rightly so. 650-some-odd cars showed up here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, all of whom earned their way here by finishing in the top ten in their division. Uh, and among other things, getting an invitation to the runoffs. It is the biggest event in motorsports in the United States. And Chubba Buddha Show is looking to put his name in the record book alongside some very famous ones if he can win his first national championship. He's an Ohio native. I suspect he has a million miles around this racetrack. The way he drives it, I mean, he could be an instructor here. That's a textbook line, just smooth and perfect. Everywhere he's going, he's doing just perfect. He's inside two laps to go now as Budasho heads for the finish line. A little bit deeper in the field, a battle for ninth position between the 40 car of Ronald LeBaron and the 57 of Tom Himes. And they're going to go side by side for turn one. And just ahead of them, the 47, uh, the 47 car in eighth position there of Rocky Ellie out of uh, Illinois. But here these two guys are staying side by side. You'd think there were two, there, there was a center line painted down the racetrack where they were. But the 57 of Himes gets around. That actually cost both of them a yep. lot of time because by doing that, going side by side, they had to slow up quite a bit to make the corner. The Baron's still trying to get the, the spot away. Uh -oh. and we've got big problems here for the 28 car. And that's Thomas Brown out of Horseheads, New York, on Long Island. That baby done blown up. Yep. <laughs> that's a classic. He's already out of it. And you see it's uh, you see underneath the car some moisture already. That one, uh, that one let loose. He started out in 25th position in the race. And uh, Brown's day is done a little bit early there. Chevy Camaro going up in smoke. 11th place battle now with the 92 car in front of it. And that is James Stevens. Stevens started 19th and has worked his way all the way up to 11th. He's out of Maryville, Illinois, also driving a Chevy Camaro. Coming up on the white flag lap for the leader while they still have issues to settle for the top spots and even the podium is not decided. The lead for Chubba Budasho back up to about three and a half seconds. LaCroix made a run at him but got caught up in some traffic. And we're, we're watching some of the... The race is going on a little bit deeper in the field. The 92 car running in 11th position right now. James Stevens, just ahead of him, it's the 40 of Ronald LeBaron in 10. So looking for a top 10 finish here is Stevens. If he can just get around that blue and yellow 40. That's always the problem. <laughs> if you could just get around it. And you try to find a way to make magic happen on this last lap, knowing that you got to do something. I saw some smoke there where somebody's been off the road. Probably just dropped a couple of wheels off. There it is there on the outside of one. The number 16 of Michael Besselman. He started in 27th, and he's worked his way up to 12th. So we've got a lot of cars that have been moving forward in the race here and helped a little bit by the attrition among some of the favorites and leaders that went out early. Yeah, absolutely. That war up in the front took its toll for sure. Final lap for Chubba Budasho in the number nine car that led, has led every lap here in American Sedan, making a, a runaway. And a lot of people are going to be going Chubba who? <laughs> His name didn't really appear in the record books. He jumps up, qualifies third, takes the lead right off the green flag, stays out of trouble. And from there, it was just a textbook drive. Yeah, he couldn't do it much better than that. I mean, he, uh, he kept clean when everybody else was hammering on each other. And 
Like I said, he, he might as well be a driver's school instructor. He's doing a perfect line around the middle highway here. So calm, cool, and collected, he ought to hang his elbow out the window as he comes around turn 15 to the start finish line. Ohio driver Chubba Budashow is going to win on his home track here and take a national championship back to his hometown of Canfield. His crew chief looking on, and the national championship in American Sedan goes to the number nine car. Let's go to Chris Neville. We're back here again with Joe Rothermel. Joe, two years in the car, first time at the runoffs. This has got to feel pretty good. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Now, Joe's, or, uh, Chuba is from Ohio. Has he put a lot of miles on this track? Uh, we've come to a couple of the regional races. Uh, we were here just two weeks ago. We uh, won Saturday. I think it was a double regional. One Saturday, uh, took fourth place on Sunday. This is your first year with the team. You going to be back next year? Uh, second year, and I'll probably be back, yes. Good job. Sounds like those two had a pretty good time, and they've got a lot to show for it here. Obviously, they did a lot of hard work that was not obvious to everybody else. Well, like I said, that, he made it look easy, but when you see him get out of the car, I guarantee it wasn't easy. He's, he had to carry that car, and, and uh, that was, that's not easy to do. The car's sliding all around and so forth. He drove it perfectly within the limit of the car. Now he's getting a little bit excited. Before that, he just looked like a man on a Sunday drive out there, just paying attention to what he had to do. He's waving to the workers now and the fans who have seen a dominating performance from Chubba Buddha Show in American Sedan. I think it just took him about a half a lap for it to sink in, that they can't take it from him. His name's in the record book, and now he's feeling, the, uh, feeling his oath. So he's heading back towards the start-finish line where we will hear from him very shortly. After that, he'll get the ceremonial victory lap, one of the very unique and fun things that they do here at the Valvoline runoffs. There is your winner who led every lap, all 20 of them, here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Well, he came here to race, that's for sure. He had a great start from third place, ran it up to the front and said, bye. <laughs> just took off. Slowed down a little bit towards the end, and Brian LaCroix ended up finishing just over two seconds behind him. He had made a run earlier. Bob Hahn rounding out the top three. There's LaCroix, the second place finisher. He, too, staying out of trouble, keeping all the fenders on the car, and Tried to make a run towards the end, but the man up front was just too strong. Yeah, he had too much of a lead going. I think he, he really uh, opened it up early and then uh, just smoothed it out. So they're heading down pit road towards Victory Circle where Chris Devil and Guy Hobbs are standing by to talk to our top finishers. We'll be right back to listen to them in a moment. Off-Road Fury 2. Now play it online. Rated E for everyone. Looking for an exciting new career opportunity? Call now and check out Marine Mechanics Institute's comprehensive vocational training school for marine technicians. Veteran marine instructors teach you to repair stern drives, outboards, and personal watercraft. Financial assistance is available for those who qualify. MMI also offers lifetime graduate placement assistance. MMI's state-of-the-art campus in Orlando is endorsed or supported by all the major marine engine manufacturers. Call toll-free now for your career information kit at 1-800-922-9664. Hi, I'm Michael Andretti. Hi, I'm Paul Tracy. Hi, I'm Max Pappas. Hi, this is Kenny Brack. Hi, I'm Cristiano D'Amato. Hi, I'm Tony Cannon. Hi, I'm Dario Franchitti. The Kart FedEx Championship Series, Mexico City. Live today at 3.30, only on Speed. Speed Channel's coverage of the SCCA Valvoline runoffs is brought to you by Valvoline. You can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. 
Take a look at the top ten. We got a great look at Chubba Buddha Show. For 20 laps, he led this one. Brian LaCroix in second, Bob Hahn third. They are the gold, silver, and bronze medals. Kyle Watkins and Monty Coles rounding out the top five. Gary Grant had a busy day and ended up in sixth. And James Stevens rounded out the top ten. Now let's go downstairs to Guy Hobbs. And a very happy Chubba has pulled it into the victory lane. Chubba, first of all, congratulations, a win on home soil. Thank you very much. It feels real good. I mean, for the first time at the runoffs, and uh, I never dreamed of winning this race, but it's just unbelievable. I mean, qualified third, and I was hoping at least to keep my position, but it can be better than first. What were you thinking when the leaders went off in that first early lap there? Uh, I was just thinking to, to keep my line, don't look in the mirror, and just like Costa was, was telling me, you know, just mind your own race. And the Hoosier tire came in, came in great. They weren't slick, they were just perfect. Right towards the end there, it looked like Brian LaCroix was starting to catch you up a little bit, and it sounded like you may have had a cracked header. Any, any concerns there the last five laps? I think I have a header leak. Uh, I was able to hear it more and more. Uh, the reason he was catching up with me because I backed off a little bit. Constantin, my crew, was telling me my lead I had, and I just backed off just a tad, you know, just in case to don't make any mistakes. All right, once again, congratulations. The rest of the crew and family were all watching over on the back stretch, just one guy in pit lane, and talking of pit lane a little further up, Chris Neville. Well, I'm up here with second place, Brian Lacroix. Brian, eighth to second, fantastic finish today. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, bumping going on in the beginning, and I gained some places like that, and then I just kind of stuck on. Uh, the number nine's car bumper in. I uh, had a, uh, a competition from um, Han there, but uh, the Goodyear tires were excellent and they hooked up for me and uh, that brought me to the front and I'm psyched. You know, we were looking up and down pit lane for your crew. You don't have a crew. You're here all by yourself. No radio. How'd you know you were in second and trying to hunt down uh, Shababua? Well, after uh, the yellow, um, uh, the double yellow, I, I knew that we were there. And uh, yeah, I don't have a crew, but uh, I got to thank uh, Matt Roberts, uh, who had the pole, and uh, his crew. Uh, they put my car back together. I had motor problems all week, and uh, they took it apart, put it together, and I'm here, and it's because of them. So maybe I can talk them into <laughs> tearing me down in tech. Now, you were 18 seconds back. You made up 16 seconds of that. Did you kind of run out of car there at the end? I didn't run out of car. The tires were hooked up, and I was going, and I knew I was catching them. And uh, we got into the lap traffic, and... Uh, that number uh, 13 car, the red Camaro, uh, really uh, gave me a hard time, and I lost all my momentum and overcooked the tires, and then I had to lay back, and I thought, you know, with six laps, I could gain a little bit on them, but I just, that was too much for the car. Back up to the booth. All right, as Chubba Buddha Show takes his victory lap of honor, and boy, a pretty happy guy behind the wheel there, huh? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Comes to his first runoffs and wins the thing like that over... Uh, a uh, heavily, heavily favored uh, opposition, really. Well, a lot of the heavily favored opposition was behind him and taking each other out, so he really made a good move at just exactly the right time to take the lead from the start and beat all of these men and women, actually, to the finish line. We had 40 starters, and naturally all, all of them will be listed here. Look at Matt Roberts back there, the pole sitter to 30th place, and he had an adventure today, too. He had an adventure that he'll soon like to forget, <laughs> and sometimes they go like that. Tom Oates also back there in 28th. He had been up towards the front, in fact, as high as 5th place from starting 10th, and then apparently had some issues uh, with mechanical problems. And out of all those cars that started the race... This man beat them all to the finish line and did a masterful job of it. Well, you can, couldn't get asked for more than what he put up this, this week. I mean, it's a perfect display of driving. Let's go back downstairs to Guy Hobbs with sixth place, Cary Grant. Yeah, he featured quite a bit uh, in uh, a, a very busy race out there. Yes, it very much was. Uh, I knew if I could make it through the first two laps and the madness involved there and keep it on the track after that, I'd have a good finishing position. And I just pushed until I got it. I lost it towards the end. Fortunately, I didn't go in the grass. I was able to keep my momentum, keep the car fired, get back going again. I had a flat-spotted tire after that, but uh, kept it on the road and brought it home. All right, congratulations. Brian, Dorsey? A real nice crowd here at Mid-Ohio waving Chubba Buddha Show around the track as the American Sedan National Champion at the Valvoline runoffs. It doesn't get any better than that. You heard him say it yourself. For my broadcast partners down on Pit Road, Chris Neville and Guy Hobbs, they had a busy day. Dorsey Schrader and I up here in the booth enjoyed a very entertaining race in American Sedan. We're glad that you could join us, too. The fun continues here at Mid-Ohio. I'm Brian Drever. So long until next time.
one of the runoffs at the start of the American Sedan at last year's SCCA runoffs. That one word might be wow. Romanian Chuba Bujoso went from third to first in his Camaro in the first couple of turns, while pole sitter Matthew Roberts spun at the top of madness. Roberts wasn't the only driver to have difficulty. Several others went off. Many more saw their cars damaged in a variety of tangles. Bujoso led all the way to the checkers, but he would not get credit for the win. He and the runner-up disqualified in the tech shed. Third place, Bob Hahn got the national title. See what happens this year. It's American Sedan next on Speed. Playground of the pony car, Ford versus Chevrolet in many cases. This weekend, though, it could be a Mustang show. Texan Bob Hahn is the defending champion. This body shop operator has three national level victories in 2003. Meet Craig Widener. He has three wins on the season as well. He was the runner up here at the runoffs in 1999, looking for a chance to get to victory lane. Some of the other key contenders are standing by with Calvin Fish. Rick, when you think of these American muscle cars, you naturally think of the performance of Andy McDermott over the past few seasons. He certainly flexed his muscle in this category. In fact, last year was going for a three-peat of national championships before mechanical problems got in his way. But Carl Watkins left here last year with the silver medal. He decided he needed to build a new hot rod, and he's used it to very good effect over in the Rocky Mountain Division with four victories on his way to breaking his own track records. But where we see the cars here situated this afternoon, tied together we expect the same thing in the race today they certainly have been used to trading paint having done that in the June sprints earlier this summer at Road America so it's time for American sedan our coverage of the SCCA National Championships the 40th Valvoline runoffs from mid Ohio sports car course in Lexington Ohio these are pony cars Mustangs Camaros Firebirds five liter motors under the hood some suspension and brake tweaks are allowed and of course full safety equipment in American sedan and Calvin Fish as the cars can prepare to roll out here in mid Ohio these are fun race cars to watch they're fun cars American muscle cars but this racetrack is going to be extremely difficult and challenging for these boys this afternoon when you look at the track itself you got a lot of fast turns here turn one turn 11 they're really fast but what's really difficult for these cars is to really get it slowed down at the end of the braking as we go down at the S's and when you go through these transitions left and right it's really hard to keep that weight under control so this is a real challenge for these boys and tire management will be key this afternoon. Let's take a look at your starting lineup. 38 cars and drivers set to do battle over 20 laps today. 46 miles the distance of this one, as are all the events at the Valvoline runoffs. Monty Cole's qualified on pole with his Mustang. John Heidrissey will line up alongside. Heidrissey already with one victory this year at the runoffs. He drives a Chevy Camaro. Andy McDermott, who's a two-time champion, starts third. There's Bob Hahn, last year's winner, qualifying back in 11th spot. Nick Littleton, Jim Wheeler, James Stevens in the 21st through 20 third spots and we show you the rest of the field Tom Aqualani will start 33rd he's a teammate of Heinrich so very interesting field Brian Till the defending champion has to start in the sixth row and he's had a difficult week oh absolutely Rick you know we shoot those grid rolling pieces and the cars are polished and the driver suits are clean and everything's pretty but there's still time to be spent on the racetrack for these guys and Bob Hahn found that time on the racetrack can create problems on Thursday at a big incident on the racetrack and it took a lot of work to get it repaired. That car was upside down. They righted it back over. They bring it back into the paddock. It was windshield. It was body work. It was a lot of work. They finally got the car, just got back out here on the grid a little while ago. It'll be interesting to see if he can make it work. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be fast, like girls Calvin Fish used to date. Let's get down to Sandy. Hey, hey, Monty Coles put it on the pole here in his Mustang. It's been an easy week for Monty, he says. Five times here at the runoffs. Best finish is sixth, but even though he sounds like a veteran in this class, this is only his second runoffs in a sedan. Guys? Monty Coles goes from the pole in car number 48. Now, Calvin, Bob Hahn rolling that car over the other day. Eh, the question's about how fast he'll be, I would think. I would think so. There's certainly concerns now as he heads into those Thursday qualifying. We'll take a quick time out. Be back for the green flag and American sedan here in mid-Ohio. What do you think? It's perfect. That's exactly what I want. What? Except bigger. What do you mean bigger? Something really pops the eye. Maybe rubies alternating with the sapphires. More stones. How they diamonds all the way around. Life's little expenses. Another good reason to keep your car around. That's why it's 75,000 miles. Switch to Vaveline's Max Life. Its added ingredients help prevent wear on critical parts. Hey, this is nothing, guys. For the honeymoon? Oh. At 75,000, time to switch to Max Life. 
put together a really nice run here. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Ooh, that hurt. Hey, look, what's this? Someone's entered the arena. Hey, get that guy out of here for crying out loud. It's Cyclone time. I'll tell you, he doesn't see him. This could get ugly. for what we've just seen. I'm speechless. Utterly incomprehensible. League MVP. Innovator. Grand champion. Acrobat. Peacekeeper. Enforcer. Record holder. Freedom fighter. Sharpshooter. All-star. Fireman. Exterminator. World champion. Commander. It's never too late for a career change. Products rating pending through Mature. PlayStation 2, the only place to play. Some people believe there's a carpentry gene, and I think I got it. Hanging things, I'm a little hit or miss on. But with the Black & Decker Bullseye, it's foolproof. I just find a stud, hang it on the wall, and it self-levels. Gives you a straight line every time. The Bullseye from Black & Decker. If these walls could talk, they'd say use the new Straight Line Stud Finder. The sensor activates on contact, so you just locate, mark, and there's your stud. Stud Finder, part of the Straight Line Laser Tool family. Our Speed Channel coverage of the 40th anniversary SCCA National Championship runoffs being brought to you today by Valvoline. Valvoline, the number one choice of top mechanics. Alongside Calvin Fish, Ivory Benjamin getting set to go in American sedan. And these, Calvin, are pony cars, and they're pretty fast. They really are. Typically, most of the cars come from the early 80s through the late 90s in terms of chassis, but they're the American muscle cars. They are allowed to balance and blueprint the motors and modified suspension and brakes. And uh, obviously, we've got Hughes here and Goodyear tires out there in the field. So a uh, real tire battle story once again in this category. But they're unibody cars. They don't have two chassis. That's correct. Basically, what you drive on the street. Let's get some last-minute thoughts from Pit Road. First to Brian Till. Well, you know, guys, I'm not a, a big environmentalist kind of guy, but conservation is definitely going to be the key here because, like you guys were talking about, big, heavy cars, but lots of horsepower. They can work on the motors in these things, and it will wear the tires down in a hurry. Big horsepower, but they're running street-type tires on it, so you got to be lot, really careful and really conserve the tires on those things. You'll burn them off probably 10 laps if you're not careful. Let's get down to Sandy. Well, one of the things that was discussed quite a bit on the grid between three or four of the drivers, the, the start of the race. Remember, this is a very crowded field and very closely competitive cars. They're talking about who's going to go in which way in the corner. They all feel if they can get through this start, they're going to have a good clean race, guys. As we saw Bob Hahn go by, they're certainly managing the start. I think it'll be very important getting through turn one and setting yourself up to make some moves if you're back at the pack like Hahn starting 11th. We have one onboard shot for you. Ken Lubash starts 16th in car number 33. Well, I think both the points that are made down there in pit lane are really relevant to this class. Time management will definitely be a key, and as uh, Sandy mentioned, the sheer physical size of these cars, very tough for these guys to go side by side or three abreast, as they like to do through these first couple of corners. So we'll see and watch the action here. About a 3,200-pound car, I would imagine. Heavy car. Once they start the slide, they're going to go for a bit. <laughs> Getting ready to go green in mid-Ohio. Glad to have you with us on speed for American Sedan. Monty Coles on the pole, John Heidrissi alongside, and we are underway. Three wide as they head to the S's. Look at McDermott there down on the inside. I'm not sure what the red car is to the inside. Andy McDermott to the outside there. Will he try the inside move as they head up into turn five? No, Monty Coles keeps the lead. On board with Lubash back in 16th at the start. You get a sense of all the dicing that's going on as we head through the S's here. And lots of horsepower, cold tires right now. We've got temperatures of about 85 degrees, I believe. And uh, here we go, down into turn nine. There's really thick and furious there, three abreast. This typically doesn't work. We see someone get locked up there a little bit further in the pack. Up over the crest of the hill, typically going to light them up there. High horsepower. On board with Blue Bash, who started 16th, that Blue Mustang, the 27, the car Ed Hosney, he's up in 14th spot. The three car, John Blizzard, started 11th. And uh, our boy with the onboard camera there, Lubash, is moving up nicely. Some smoke showing as they come to the carousel. Now you see this long carousel turn that's going to load up that left front corner. You've got to manage that left front tire so you have something at the end of this 20-lap run. 
Monty Coles leads the first lap. Andy McDermott is a past champion. Second spot, Chubba Bujoso, who figured in the action prominently last year. Third of the 93. Heinrichy, who started on the outside pole, shuffled back to fourth. Yeah, this is the, the start that we expected for John Heinrichy. He's definitely going to have to be patient now and uh, just let his car come in. There you're going to see him try and tuck back to the inside and try and get around. I think it's Chubba Bujoso there on the outside. Great right battle for third. third. Yeah, as they come down the back stretch here at Mid Ohio, Brian Till. Yeah, but don't you guys think that Heinrichy is probably the best guy in this in this field to lose a couple of positions with all the showroom stock racing he's done, all the sedan racing. He may be the guy. He may even be giving up positions right now just so he has something at the end. I don't know. Kind of a risky strategy. Guys are hard to pass, but he is a wily veteran. He knows how to win. Well, this is amateur racing. Again, this is the SCCA's national championship showdown weekend. They race for medals here. There's very little prize money, just some contingency money up for grabs. But Heinrichy's a pro, Calvin. He really is. I mean, he knows all about this type of racing. And there we see that car getting shuffled back there. So, uh, but Joseph are having some difficulties here as we get into the second lap of this race. So this is in the early going to really be having any handling difficulties. So maybe he's losing some power of some description. But John Harness, as you said, he's won a lot of championships. And those two leaders are not too far away. Now we have another battle going on for fourth place there. That's the number eight machine, Brian Wallace. He's made up a couple of spots on that one lap alone. That's the orange car of Wallace, rookie of the year, or rookie this year, I should say, in 2003. And uh, Jerome Post, I believe, is right there as well with him as they battle for position. Heading down through turn one, Wallace up and forth. Chubba Bujoso right there. The 89 is Christian Smith. That's the red, white, and blue Camaro that you see behind the eight of Wallace. So they're running in fourth and fifth spot. Bujoso one position further back in Whoa. sixth. <laughs> that was some dirt track in there. Those tires from last Way 20 laps driving them like that. Sideways, got the rear end locked up a bit, and then he just held the slide for life there through the keyhole turn, a little wide. And now the uh, other car's going to have a bit of a run on him there. I think that's Christian Smith. A little further back, you see the car of Bob Hahn. He's in 10th spot in that white Mustang. The 96 car rolled that car, the defending champion sedan. There you see the Mustang with the blue stripes a little further back, battling down into turn four. There's the 55, Craig Wiedner. We met him earlier running in eight. There's McDermott in the 24, and your leader up in front, Monty Cole. So the top two Mustangs pulling away up under the Honda wow. Bridge. You see McDermott there. He has got incredible car control. He's a big, beefy guy, but man, has he got a lot of finesse when it comes to really holding the slide in one of these American muscle cars. Look at Heinrich yeah. now, right back on the tail of these two guys. Just as Brian Till said, he's not going to be concerned by a little gap in the early going. He just wants to keep it smooth. And you look at the line there that John Heinrich running a lot cleaner. There's not as much body lean in that Camaro as there is in those Mustangs. So a little bit more roll control set into that car, and that's all about the setup. McDermott won the championship here in 2000 and 2001. Bob Hahn is the defending winner. Heinrichy has won several championships, including one here this weekend in Touring One. And he is up to third after starting fourth. Dropped back to sixth position on the first lap. Two more laps. He's up close to the leaders. Monty Coles, though, on the pole today in the 48 car. He's led all the way. Here comes McDermott. We'll see if he can get the pass done when we come back. On the job site, time is money. To save time, I need more than a tool, I need a system. The Rotozip spiral saw system. It cuts steel pipe, cuts laminate, cement board, does all sorts of tough jobs. With new features, the original just got tougher and faster. Rotozip, tough enough to tackle any job. The world's greatest driver in the world's toughest racing against the world's most ruthless villains. Don't miss one exciting minute of Speed Racer. Weeknights at 6, every morning at 7, and Friday nights at midnight, only on Speed. Stop. This one. A couple papers, mails in a mailbox. Yeah. Give me the package. They think the signs read, no one is home. Mom, what's going on? Yet they missed the most important sign of all. It's okay. It's okay. Hello? It's Prince. It's okay. 
Brinks Home Security protected this family and they can help protect yours too. The Brinks award-winning monitoring center provides a quick link to the proper authorities 24 hours a day. Call Brinks Home Security now and get a free 10-point home security analysis. The Brinks standard system with keypad installed for just $99 and will install a second keypad free. That's a $125 value. You'll always feel safe at home with Brinks Home Security. Brinks Home Security, dedicated to fast response and peace of mind 24 hours a day. Call now. John Heinrichsy has won two national championships in cars built by Tom and Joe Aqualante in the T1 class. Tom and Joe both drive. As a matter of fact, they're running here at the runoffs. But you guys have unique perspectives on building race-winning cars. Well, Brian, there's not a lot of um, rocket scientists to this whole affair. We try and keep things nice and simple, work off a basic platform that almost anybody can work on, and uh, keep it simple. The yeah, American sedan is in the same situation. It's modified very little. It's basically a street car. And uh, with our crew of volunteers, college students, and friends, uh, we uh, managed to get them running pretty good. Well, how many times have you heard it before? Don't try to reinvent the wheel and look what it is that you can get done. And that team has certainly accomplished a lot here over the years. Let's check in on the 51 car. Uh, Tom Aquilanti driving. He's back in 32nd position. But uh, John Heinrichsy, who won Touring 1 for the team earlier, up in third. So they certainly do a great job. One car off the pace as they come down through the S's. There's the 51 as a national event win this year. And as we mentioned several times over the course of the weekend here at Mid-Ohio, these are champions in their own areas, in their own right. A lot of race winners. Now, up front, we've had a change for the lead. The 24, McDermott has gotten in front, and Heinrichsy's moved to second. Samadhi so Coles, who started on the pole and led the first three laps, Calvin, he shuffled back to third. Here's how it happened at the keyhole. I think as we're going to break there, that's the move that Andy McDermott puts on him. Down the inside, no lockup, perfectly under control. Then you just got to be patient, hold that track position, get on the power early, and make the move stick. Don't allow the guy to come back at you. But Heinrichsy now, he's just sitting there waiting to pounce. Four laps on the board, working lap five. If you're Heinrichsy and you were third and you saw that pass for the lead, was that just a matter of picking the right spot to also make the move and go by the 48? I think so. I mean, uh, he took advantage of the situation as uh, Monty was struggling a little bit up there in the keel. But look at the grind that Heinrichsy makes up there under Andy McDermott. But look at that Mustang, how it yeah. leans. I mean, it puts so much weight transfer when he transitions through these corners. It's going to overload the outside tire. And that's a really delicate balance for the driver to try and keep it underneath him at that. Heinrichsy really putting a lot of pressure now on McDermott. McDermott and Sandy Hayden. Heinrichsy certainly has the bit in his teeth here in the early going. Well, that was all just part of the poker game. Remember in the early pit report, I said it was nervy. They were talking about what would happen at the start of the race. Obviously, he just dropped back, watched things unfold, and then took his place in there. They say he's just playing it safe, playing it, playing it cool, at least for now. Heinrichsy really a master of car control, too, Calvin. He is, but, you know, he doesn't rely on it. He drives the car so smooth, he's not letting the tires slide, and that's what it's all about. I mean, the Mustang's a heavier car. It looks like, look at that lean as he goes through there. The Camaro, when you look at the horizontal plane there as he's going through the corners, it just doesn't lean over as far and doesn't load up the outside tire. So he works a lot on the shock absorber package and really trying to get the car underneath him, and it's all about managing the tire, maintaining that contact patch, particularly through corners like this one. Brian Till, Monty Cole's back in third now, and he's dropping back. He's not able to stay with the leaders. What's going on? Well, Greg Eaton is the crew chief for Monty Cole's. Greg, we saw him go from first to third. Does he have a problem, or is he just willing to wait right now? Man, with those guys he's racing with right now, they're two of the best in the country. So uh, when the opportunity exists, we'll hopefully uh, we'll jump back ahead. Got to conserve tires just a little bit? Always. These cars are heavy, and the tires are small, and uh, it's pretty warm today. So. Yeah, tire conservation is probably one of the keys to winning. Great battle on the racetrack, meantime, for the lead. Heinrichsy leaning on McDermott, and McDermott came away the leader again, Cal. What a battle. I think Andy McDermott knows that if he lets Heinrichsy by, he could theoretically just check out. So he's really going to be aggressive in trying to hold on to that lead. But we've got 15 laps to go. Can he do it for one lap, let alone 15? Saw the 81 car spun there and uh, sort of out of harm's way. That's the car of Post, Jerome Post from Hoboken, New Jersey, who started ninth, and uh, he was backwards on the racetrack, local caution only. This is for the lead, coming to the front straightaway. McDermott, the, the uh, champion a couple of years ago, two championships for McDermott in American Sedan, but he's got high receipt, who's got the Touring 1 crown in his pocket already this weekend, right all over him as they hit turn one. 
Six laps on the board, 14 remain. A great battle at the front of the field in American Sedan. Cowles, Wallace, and Christian Smith, your top five. We'll be back. Introducing the all new rotary powered Mazda RX-8. Jack? The way you feel about sports cars will never be the same. Happy anniversary, honey. Yeah, happy anniversary. Um, there's something I gotta do. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what? Uh, I love this woman! I love her! What are you doing? Stop! Okay, then I guess this will have to do. Oh my god. I love this man. I love him, I love him, I love him. How to speak Australian. Oi! Keeper. Shall we? Absolutely. Beer. Foster's Australian for beer. Introducing Duralast Tools. Professional grade tools, precision engineered to take on the toughest jobs. And backed by a serious lifetime guarantee. No questions asked. New Duralast Tools. Only at AutoZone. Before becoming Sir Jackie Stewart, he was the Flying Scott. Jackie Stewart, The Flying Scott, a Speed Channel premiere, Sunday, 8 p.m., only on Speed. The 40th anniversary of the SCCA's Valvoline Runoffs from the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in Lexington, Ohio. You're watching the runoffs, as always, on Speed with Calvin Fish. I'm Rick Benjamin. Great to have you with us. It's been a perfect day for racing here. Some great competition in all categories on this championship weekend. But the battle for the lead in the American Sedan has been terrific. Whoa. Andy McDermott out in front. He's gone off the racetrack in the lane automotive Mustang. It looks like he is done. He's pulling it behind the wall, Cal. Oh, and look at the fluid coming out from underneath there. Major smoke over on the right-hand side, a major fluid. So let's take a look at the replay there. Andy riding the curb there. I think that's coming on to the long back straight away. You've got Heinrichsy right on his tail. Hard on there the it pat, is. and there it is. The motor just goes away on him. I think he might have missed a shift. That's upshifting there at that point. Yeah, he's just going up through the gears there and uh, hard on the power, of course, and uh, motor goes away. So he used the engine up. Let's go down to Brian Till. Well, let's take one more look at what happened first before we do that. Coming through the corner, this is the keyhole turn. Dumping him onto the back straight away. McDermott out in front, Heinrichsy in second. And we'll get another look at how the motor let go in the number 24. There it is, right out of the headers. As you can see, Brian Till, what's McDermott's crew saying? Well, Big Jim Gross is the crew chief, at least this weekend for Andy McDermott. Jim, you picked a hell of a time to show up and be crew chief. Yeah, it's a little disappointing right now. We uh, changed two motors this weekend, and it looks like we had still the same problem. Those motors, motors that you guys built, do you think there's a part or a clearance issue in there, obviously? Don't know until we'll get it apart. Hopefully the new blocks that AAS approved, we can, maybe it was one of those problems. And the normal crew chief, his normal crew chief, week in and week out is where? Uh, he's at a sh uh, Sheriff's Department heavy rescue test this weekend. He saves people's lives. And, and he sent you here to deal with all the pressure. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> and you saw Andy McDermott uh, double dribble his helmet inside the car there. Not a happy guy. Not a guy you want to have angry at you either. No, certainly not. I mean, he's a big boy, and he's frustrated. He won two of these championships in a row, had electrical gremlins last year, and now a motor go away on him. So he could have been going for four in a row. He had a lot of pressure from John Heinrichsy. He's probably got a windshield that is full of oil right now because that thing yeah. blew up right in front of him. Heinrichsy in that blue number 54 Camaro. Two and a half seconds the lead last time by Monty Coles, the pole sitter in the Mustang. You can just see Coles' white Mustang, the number 48. He's still second, but he's a long way behind Heinrichsy. Heinrichsy might score two championships on the same day here at Mid-Ohio. Certainly rare. We're a third of the way home. This is the fight for fifth. Chubba Bujoso in the 93 car right behind him. Robin Burnett in car number two. There's Bujoso's Camaro and a Mustang. The two car right there. A little smoke showing out of that Ford as well. Car number two. Bujoso was up front last year, but uh, 
didn't make it through the tech shed after the checkered flag. That's right. He won the event on the road and then didn't get through tech. And that's the half the battle here at the runoffs. I mean, you got so many cars and the interpretation of the rules. These guys will like, stretch it to the limit there. And it's up to the tech guys uh, after these events to go through the cars and check that they're all legal. So it's not, you know, that much of a shock to see someone lose one of these national championships a little bit later in the day. As even as these cars are with the five liter motors, as we watch the uh, car of Pajoso sideways out of the keyhole corner. Here comes the number two of Burnett in sixth, trying to get a run. That's a Steena Mustang. That's one of the great tuner Mustang builders in the country. But look again, we're seeing that telltale smoke coming out. Looks like coming out from under the engine and then all the way back, coming out from the back end of that Mustang there. So he may have some issues too. The 21 car, Chris Billings, has gotten by Craig Widener's 55 to pick up a position. They're battling for seventh spot, but give that spot to Billings, who just made the pass after they came across start finish last time by. There's Widener in the 55. There's a lot of work for charity as well in that uh, race team. He races for abused children. That's one of his favorite projects besides fielding the number 55 race cars from Cadillac, Michigan. 17 seconds back in seventh position. And you look at the entry sheet and you see Mustangs, but two distinctly different Mustangs there, different eras there. See the red car in front, a much more modern car, the number 55 car there, driven by Craig Widener. The 27 right up behind now. That's Ed Hosley Whoa. from Northville, Michigan, and Widener offline going to the carousel. Locked up the front brakes there and got a little bit wide, and immediately he was punched upon there by Ed Hosney. Climbing on board with Ken Lubash, who's up in 11th spot right now. Good run from 16th starting, coming to halfway in Mid Ohio. Dear Santa, thank you for my new Honda Sierra 50F. Now, when my family goes out riding, I can go too. Last weekend, I even met Ricky Carmichael. It was cool. My dad says that riding can teach me lots of things like responsibility and how to be a good sport. This holiday season, start your kids out right with a four-stroke CRF from Honda. Available now at your local dealer. I never knew learning could be this much fun. Not all problems are conveniently located near a power source. That's when you should think of the new Dremel lithium-ion cordless tool. With 10.8 volts of power and over 150 available attachments and accessories, the lithium-ion cordless tool can get you out of any jam, anywhere. When you think it can't be done, think Dremel. Ultra high performance from racetracks to your car. Formula technology. Kumo. Meet Todd. All right, I just need a direction. He's turning his entire life over to the TV audience. Don't mess with me now. Every decision voted on by you. I'm not a loser. Todd TV, the ultimate reality show, coming in January to FX. There's one Ace Sedan driver who has fought long and hard to get there. Chris Smith even has his mascot, Wiley Coyote. He's everywhere. Chevy driver, works for Ford. And three years ago, Chris was in pit lane with us at Speed Channel. He was producing, field producing for us. And I remember then Chris said, I'm coming back to the runoffs, but I'm going to race. And you've done it. We did. It's uh, taken two years of hard work and planning to get here. But with the understanding of my wife and my family, we're here. You're here, and uh, if there is an Acme company on this one, I think it might be Heinrichsy. What do you think about? Heinrichsy's the guy to beat. He's uh, definitely the one to shoot for, but uh, we hope to upset his plans for a win. And he has one more little surprise, one more good luck symbol. It's Wiley, Wiley Coyote with the checkered flag. <laughs> Now, if I were Christian Smith, I'd be more concerned about explaining to my bosses at Ford that I raced <laughs> on national television a Chevrolet. I know, that's a tough one. And I was hoping Sandy was going to show us her tattoos there. <laughs> oh, boy. 
The rivalry amongst you three this weekend is better than anything we've seen on the track, I think. Christian Smith in fourth spot. Sandy really doing a nice job wrestling that race car. He's doing a great job when you consider he had to tell, tear practically the entire car apart on Wednesday. They had gear problems, transmission fluid everywhere. His wife, Michelle, seven months pregnant, is in pit lane, as well as his mother, Sharon, is here with him, cheering him on, and uh, he's hoping for a good uh, outcome here today. It is a family affair at these runoffs, no doubt about it. And any woman who's coming here seven months pregnant, I give her a lot of credit indeed. Battling for position again behind Smith, Bujoso and Chris Billings side by side. And Billings in one of those older Mustangs, Calvin, the 21. Yeah, and he got in there deep on the brakes. The boys uh, gave each other enough room to get through the keyhole clean without running into each other. He gets a good shot, a little bit more horsepower. And... Uh... Good straightaway speed there with the old car. Christian Smith has been shuffled back to fifth. Robin Burnett in the two has gotten by him. So these cars are fifth, sixth, and seventh. Bujoso oh, trying to get around the 21. Not quite. This is good clean racing. Yes, they it is. Not, uh, other enough for him. They're not trading paint right now. Sandy Hay, what are you seeing from your vantage point? Well, we know now why Christian Smith just shuffled.